Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I bless God for this new week. Listen, God, no matter what is going on in the world, is set to prosper you. Praise God. He is set to do you well. Praise God. He, he loves you. And I want you to know this. God loves you. And two, he is faithful. Too faithful. Praise God. He, failure is not in his vocabulary. He can't think it. Praise God. He is not about to fail you. If you are failing in any area of your life, I'll tell you this. It's not because God planned for you to fail. It's because you don't have the required knowledge needed to succeed. So what do I do? You know, sometimes people roll this thing completely on God and they don't want to take responsibility at all. But let me tell you this, the responsibility you owe yourself as a child of God is the responsibility of knowledge and understanding. See, that's why James said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask from the one who gives liberally and he doesn't hold back. Think about it. If any man lack wisdom, what wisdom is he talking about? He said, if you don't know what to do in a particular situation, ask the Lord. Listen, don't get stuck in life. Never. Don't get stuck in life not knowing what to do. See, that's why the Bible says, he that comes to God must believe that he is. So if you approach the Lord and you believe he is there, and then you know, okay, no, what do I need right now? It's wisdom you need. In every situation, it's wisdom. What do I mean wisdom? You just need to know what to do. You know, maybe you're, you're at a point in your life now, you need to pay your bills or, or okay, um, school, this is the beginning of the year, school is resuming for your children, and you don't have the money to pay the school fees. You don't know what to do. You've not been paid at your job. Maybe you did some businesses that they are owing you. Listen to me. As long as, you know, you know, we make that mistake. Oh God, if you can just make these people pay so that I will have money to pay school fees. Father, if you can just make that person that is owing me, pay me my money. Father, oh, touches her, touches her, touches her. Now, when he prayed that for a while, you see that God is not touching his heart. Father, trouble him, trouble him, trouble him. Let him not rest. Hey, you are doing yourself a disservice. Thinking, you see, the thought, your thought is the problem. Because now you're thinking that, it's not like I don't have money. I have money. Just that people borrowed money from me and they don't want to pay. Or it's just that my company is owing me three, four, five months salary. They've not paid me. Oh, that business I did, the whoever. You know, you, you understand what I'm talking about? And then you, you, you keep telling yourself that if only those people can pay and your mind cannot go beyond that point, it becomes a problem to you. It becomes a problem. Maybe you're a wife, you're married, and all you can think about is, I wish my husband can just do the right things. I wish my husband can just become resp more responsible. I wish my husband can just, um, you know, get the money in, you know, so that he's like, hey, why would you put your faith on the obedience of another man who might decide not to obey? Why don't you release your own faith in the Lord who is faithful and get the job done? I don't, I don't subscribe to a woman waiting for her husband to do all the work. I don't. Now, not because I am in for lazy men. No, see, listen, let life move. If you can, that's why the Bible says two is better than one. If the husband cannot have faith, then the wife should have faith in God. 
If the husband is acting irresponsibly, then the wife should act irresponsibly. Bridge the gap. Let the work be done. If God has blessed you as a wife, go ahead. Get the job done. Hey, no, my husband has, but because I'm, I'm, I have, he would rather me. It's, you know, I taught you this thing last year. <laughs> See, it is more blessed to give than to receive. If, the, if, if, if your husband is, have decided not to take responsibility, it's not a problem. It, it shouldn't weigh you down because your heart is very important before the Lord. What do you do? You turn to your high priest who is Jesus. Oh, oh, we don't, we don't understand his, his, his ministry in our life as high priest. We don't understand it. As high priest, he administers not only forgiveness of sins. He administers wealth to us. So you go before him and say, Lord Jesus, you know, you know what we're going to do. I am getting a bit tired waiting for my husband. You know, he always puts my heart on, on, on you know what I'm talking about. I, I mean... I don't know if he will do it or not. Hey, Lord Jesus, you know what? We are supposed to be depending on you. So I depend on you right now. Help the infirmity of my husband and myself. And supply for this need. Whatever the need is. The children's school fees, supply for this need, Lord. Thank you. See, let me tell you this. In fact, I just heard the Lord say it to me right now as I, was, as I was showing you how to pray. Listen. The Bible says, you receive not because you ask not. Did you see that? You received not because you asked not. Now let me explain. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're just awesome. See, we, we, the, the word of God is sweet. Now, when I say the word of God, when it's coming from the mouth of the Lord, it's sweet. I mean, what he's telling me right now, I'm just enjoying this right now. See, now listen. You are a wife. And you're always, oh, honey, husband, whatever you call your husband. You're supposed to be doing this. You're supposed to be doing this. You are, ah, the bills, this one, this one. And then, oh, um, I'll see what I can do. Or, oh, um, there's no money right now. Or, you know, you, know, you start talking and then, and then you, you, your heart starts palpitating. You know, oh, I hope, I hope, I hope. Come on. Have you asked the Lord? So, what do I mean? Is, the, is it not my husband's response? No, 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 no. You, have you gone before the Lord and said, Lord, it's time for this bill to be paid. It's time for children's school it's time for house rent it's time for food supplies it's time for groceries it's time for this and and, and that father i ask in the name of the lord jesus christ and i receive it thank you lord you provide it i'll tell you this now this is what else was telling me don't you know that when you ask the lord you as a woman i'm talking to the woman now you as a woman when you ask the lord he is the one that will decide. And if he passes it through your husband, he is the one that will command. There is no way God will provide for what you ask for through your husband. And he will use it for something else. The Spirit of God will compel him. See? So this is another way you can get your husband to be responsible. How? I know what to do. I'm going to ask the Lord. Praise God. I'll ask the Lord. And he will get it done. I'll never forget a few, 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 not, not so long ago, recently. You know, I was with my wife and then we were just, you know, talking and, and just having fun together in our room. And then we were, I think we were supposed to go somewhere or something. And then my wife said, ah, I don't even have what to wear. Now, if you're married, you know when your wife says that. And I'm like, what? And, and then my daughter walked into the room. And I called, I said, come, 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 come. 
Mommy just said she doesn't have what to wear. Can you look at this whole wardrobe? What are you seeing over here? You know? And I'm like, we were just joking. So I said, see, Mommy has more clothes than me. And then I said, I have used all my money to buy clothes for your mom. You know? And then my daughter, immediately I said that. said, Daddy, I want to pray. And then she prayed, Father, Daddy has bought many clothes for Mommy. I pray that you will give Daddy many more clothes and, you know, suits. And, you know, she was just mentioning. And we joked. We, we just laughed over it. Guess what? That day, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not saying another day. That day, the Lord just laid it in my heart to go visit, you know, someone. And then, now I consider him an elder brother to me. So, the Lord just laid it in my heart to go see him. And then I went to see him. I called, oh, I'm coming over to see you. We've not seen in a while. So, I went to see him. And then we talked and talked, and when we were done, it's like we prayed together, and we were done, it's like, ah. He said, Pastor, come, I have some things for you. And then he opened up his wardrobe and began to bring, I said, look, I made these clothes, but they are, I mean, I can't wear them because, you know, whatever, you know, I've slimmed down and, and things like this. So like, this should be yours, this should be your size. Suits, trads, shoes. What's going on here? <laughs> you know, so I received those things and I got home. So by the time I got home, I was telling my wife, like, look at what just we just got. And then my wife said, Remember what your daughter prayed for this morning. Whoa. <laughs> now, now that's just how family work. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't sit down there and start coming. Now, we were joking. But she came up and said, let's pray. And we prayed and God answered. I, I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Now, husband and wife can be there. You may that jokingly or just complaining. Oh, this one, this one, you know, and that one, and that one. And then it ends there. No prayer, no accent. We learned something from my daughter that day. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, okay, we need this. Okay, let's ask. Father, we, we ask for this and we receive it with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. End every discussion that has to do with meeting a need. End it with asking. You know why? Because you've got a high priest. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. See, we enjoy... <sighs> We enjoy this whole thing. Why? Because we recognize that Jesus is our high priest. And, and, and he's the one responsible for administering the inheritance to us. We are rich, brothers and sisters. We are. We are rich, very rich, stinkingly rich. So where's the money? Oh, you don't know? It's in our account in heaven. Now, oh, listen, 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 listen. What we say? Our account in heaven. Say, hey, 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 they have come in the sweet bank. I'm not talking about the sweet bank and bank. I am saying we have a bank account in heaven. The same way you would say, I have a bank account in London. And then you reside in Nigeria. The same way you say I have a bank account in the U.S. It's the same way I'm telling you I have a bank account in heaven. So what do you do with the bank account? I withdraw what I need. <laughs> Isn't that what Jesus said? Jesus said don't lay up treasure here on earth because moats come in and destroy it. He says rather lay up your treasures in heaven. Not so that they will use it to be building your house, so that when we get to heaven, you live in a mansion. No, it means it's the safest place to keep your stuff in heaven. And we need God Jesus as the one who functions and, and, and serves as minister over those things. Listen. If you understand what I'm talking to you about, your broke days are completely over.
<laughs> Praise God. <laughs> you need to understand this. Because my time is up. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Praise God. And then we're going right deep into this matter. God bless you. Bye-bye.